If your company maintains inventory, performing a physical count is the best way to reconcile inventory detail reports with the actual on-hand inventory. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through the steps to completing a physical count in SageMass 90 and Mass 200. These steps are updating and posting all transaction entry files that affect inventory, verifying that the physical count variance register is clear and no items are frozen, running the inventory negative tier report to identify any overdistributed tiers that need to be resolved, printing the physical count worksheets and completing the item counts, entering the counted quantities in physical count entry, and finally, printing and updating the physical count variance register. So let's begin with the first step, updating and posting all transaction entry files that affect inventory. This would include invoices and shipments in process in the sales order module, all inventory management transaction entries, purchase order receipts, returns, and requisitions, RMA receipts, bill of materials production, disassembly, and cost roll-up entries, and all work order transaction entries. For this demonstration, let's assume that we've already completed these updates and postings. So now let's move on to step two, verifying that the physical count variance register is clear and no items are frozen. To run the register, we'll go to our menu tree, expand modules, and select inventory, physical count, physical count variance register. Let's accept the posting date and click Preview. We'll leave all criteria selected and hit Proceed. The message, Data is not selected for report printing, indicates our register is empty and no data is left over from previous physical counts. So let's click OK to close the window. If data had existed and a register had previewed, a determination would have to be made whether to update or clear the information. We'll cover clearing frozen items later in this tutorial. Now we'll move to step three, running the inventory negative tier report to identify overdistributed tiers that need to be resolved. This condition exists when sales or issues are made for items prior to processing receipts. Adjusting negative tiers on a regular basis is typically a part of the period end process and is critical when using LIFO or FIFO as a valuation for inventory items. We'll cover the negative tier report and adjustment process in another tutorial. Now we'll move to step four, printing the physical count worksheet. To do this, we'll go to the menu tree and under inventory management, physical count, we'll select physical count worksheet. There are several options for printing the worksheet and you'll need to determine the settings that are best for your company. For instance, the report can be sorted by item code, bin location, or item description. We're going to assume that our inventory is stored in bins at each warehouse and that bin locations have been entered into the system. So when we run the report, we'll choose to sort it by bin location. Moving on, we'll deselect the option to double space the report. Now let's look at the report options. We have four choices. Print Worksheet only prints a report and does not freeze items. Print Worksheet and Freeze Items will produce a report and freeze the perpetual inventory for the item selected. Freeze Items will only freeze the on-hand quantity of the selected items. And Clear Frozen Items cancels the physical count information entered and unfreezes the on-hand quantity information without completing the physical count process. This is used to clear items in the physical count variance register so they won't be posted. For our demonstration, we'll select print worksheet and freeze items. Freezing items keeps a record of the current quantities in inventory management, sales orders, purchase orders, RMA, work orders, and bill of materials. Transactions and other modules that affect inventory can still be processed and updated while inventory is frozen, and inventory on hand will be adjusted at posting. However, when the physical count is entered, it'll be compared to the quantity on hand that was recorded at the time the inventory was frozen. Continuing on, we'll leave print quantity on hand unchecked. Accordingly, the individual taking the count will not be tempted to enter the count the same as the quantity on hand without actually counting the item. 
Under Product and Procurement Types to Print, we'll leave all checkboxes selected. And under Physical Count Entry, let's check the box to default quantity counted to quantity on hand. This option presets the Physical Count Entry column with the current quantity on hand, so we only have to enter counts that are different than the frozen quantity on hand. In the lower section, we can choose which items print on our worksheet and are frozen. Under Warehouse, Let's set the operand to equal to and select our central warehouse. And we want to focus on a specific product line, so we'll select equal to, and using the lookup, we'll select the cables and accessories product line. Now that our selections are complete, let's go ahead and preview the worksheet. Normally, the worksheet would be printed rather than previewed, so that the physical count could be entered on the sheets. Note that printing or previewing the worksheet freezes the items at the current quantity on hand. Reviewing the worksheet, notice that in accordance with our selections, it only includes the central warehouse, the items are sorted by bin location, and it's limited to items in the CNA Cables and Accessories product line. At this point, the worksheets should be distributed to the individuals taking the physical count and counted quantities should be recorded on the worksheets for each item. Now let's assume that all worksheets have been returned, so we're ready to move to step 5, which is entering the counted quantities in physical count entry. To do this, we'll return to the menu tree, and under Inventory Management, Physical Count, we'll select Physical Count Entry. Here we'll use the lookup to select our central warehouse. Notice that the physical count entry lines can be sorted by item code, bin location, or item description. We'll choose bin location so the entry window will match our worksheets. And as before, we'll stay with the defaults for product and procurement types. In the selections area, we'll again focus on the product line cables and accessories, so we'll select equal to and choose CNA from the lookup. Now let's open the lines tab. This is the data entry screen where quantities from the individual worksheets are entered. Since we use the same selection criteria, the order here matches the worksheets. Because we chose to have the quantity counted column preset with the quantity on hand total, we only need to enter a quantity for items with a variance. Let's suppose that comparison of the worksheet shows discrepancies on lines 1, 2, and 5, so we'll enter the counted values for these items. On line 1, let's suppose that our worksheet shows 19, so we'll increase the quantity from 15 to 19. And on line 2, suppose the count was 29, which we'll enter here. And on line 5, suppose the count was also 29. We'll assume that the count and system quantities match for the remaining items, so let's go ahead and click Accept. Now we'll move on to the sixth and final step, printing the physical count variance register. To do this, we'll go ahead and click the printer icon. The posting date should be the date the physical count was taken and we'll accept the current date. For demonstration purposes, we'll preview rather than print the register. Here we'll select the criteria for the physical count variance register. Since we only counted items in our central warehouse and product line CNA, we'll make the same selections here. So for our sort option, we'll select bin, and for warehouse, equal to central warehouse, and product line, equal to CNA. And now we'll click proceed. As expected, the report prints in the same order as our count worksheets, making it easier to review for accuracy. Importantly, any significant variances should be evaluated prior to updating. Let's close the report, and for our example, we'll assume that we're satisfied with the variances and click Yes to update the physical count variance register, and Yes again to print the daily transaction register, and we'll choose Preview. Let's now close the report, and finally, we'll click Yes to update the register. And that completes the steps for processing a physical count in SageMass 90 and Mass 200. Give us a call if you need assistance with this or any other feature in your SageMass 90 or Mass 200 system. Well, that's it for this tutorial. 
Bye for now.